G'day folks, welcome back to the Hilltop Workshop. Uh, Rob here. I just want to do a quick video. Well, it's probably not going to be quick. I'm probably going to give them a bit of a rant. So if the ADD takes over, apologies. But I've been wanting to do this video for quite a while. Um, now I've been doing cabaretters for about well, over 20 years, 20, 23, maybe close to 25 years. And the one thing that has irked me and the one thing that I think needs to be rectified when it comes to cabaretters is this whole bullshit term of Oh, just put a kit through it. Yeah, put a kit through it, mate. Should be right. Just put a, put a kit through it. For those of you that may not completely understand what these people are alluding to when they say that, a carburetor kit is a package of... Shit. Got one around here somewhere. This is a carburetor kit. There's countless brands, countless designs, countless, countless styles. Uh, this is the one that I just happen to have on hand at the moment. And what this has is a collection of gaskets, seals, needle and seats, all these different ancillary consumable parts that wear out over time for a carburetor. Now, that's all well and good. That's, there's nothing wrong with that. That's, all, that. that's a necessity. That's a necessary part of doing this job. What people don't realise when they say, put a kit through it, just put a kit through it, is the countless other things that can go wrong with a carburetor that can be causing whatever problem you're having that putting a kit through it isn't going to fix now uh, quite often on forums or when you're down at you know your local sort of meet and greet or hang out or whatever and people say oh yeah i've been having some trouble with the carby oh what's the car oh, it's this sort of you know whatever carby and it's oh you just need to put a kit through it mate that'll fix it no just hearing that saying irks me no end. Now that's not because I'm a carburetor specialist and I'm trying to bring more work in, although that would be great, but the problem with that statement is thinking that replacing the gaskets and the seals and maybe cleaning it out with a bit of petrol or whatever you choose to use or carby cleaner is going to fix your carburetor and quite often or more often than not, it's not. If your carburetor is doing something specifically wrong, it's going to be a blocked orifice, a blocked passageway, it's going to be a, a damaged diaphragm, it's going, you know, there's going to be something inherently wrong. Uh, yes, these things do age, and yes, they do, you know, things do, do um, bushes wear out, faces wear, um, things like that, but purely buying a carburetor kit, replacing the gaskets and seals and needle and seat, putting it all back together and expecting it to run perfectly is, it's, it's just, it's just bullshit. You might get lucky, but no. Um, and, I, and quite simply, I just, I just won't do it. If someone comes to me and says, oh, I can put a kit through the cabra, so I'd say no. <laughs> I will use a kit when I overhaul it, but when I overhaul it, I'll overhaul it properly. Now, what does that mean? Okay, that means taking all of these parts and machining all the faces on them till they're dead flat again. That means ultrasonically and chemically cleaning this, not just in a normal detergent, but in a, in a, a chemical that's specific, a chemical compound. It's a two-part compound that's specifically designed for cleaning carburetor bodies and um, not damaging the finish on them. Uh, it means, yeah, again, machining surfaces flat, not taking too much off it. I never take off any more than is necessary for me to be confident that this is going to seal flat. You see, I've got a machined surface all the way through here. These areas here have been lightly skimmed but I don't need to take any more meat off there because I want to leave that part number there. I want to leave that number stamped in there. And I don't want to just sit there and grind this thing away until, you know, it's there's nothing bloody left of it. You know, it's nuts. Um, this carburetor, when I pulled it apart, looked for all intents and purposes like a fairly standard carburetor. But as soon as I pulled the front bowl off it, I saw... Well, this is the first thing that sort of stuck, stuck out to me. This is the transfer tube that goes between the front and rear bowls. Uh, one end, normal. The other end's been hacked off with a frigging hacksaw. Um, now, that will be because whoever touched this carburetor either had the wrong kit for it or didn't know what parts were in the kit and how to use them. Um, Holly changed their style of seal on the end of these uh, a little while, not that long ago. Um, and I don't personally like them um, because they are exposed to a bit more engine bay heat and they perish more often than the uh, traditional O-rings. So I try to use the O-rings where I can, but I'm not going to be able to do that with this. Uh, this. This is only just long enough to make it now. You can see it's been gripped with some bloody vice grips or pliers or something. Um, the transfer tube for the uh, accelerator pump had two different size O-rings on it. Um, the seals for the needle and seat um, I don't have the old ones here I don't think um, but someone had used that actually doubled up using the nylon seals 
you know, I, I traditionally always prefer to use the um, the paper seals because uh, they just seal better. And once you set your float level, you shouldn't have to touch it again. Um, so you set it once, forget about it. Those seals will seal for a bloody long time. The nylon ones, especially if for whatever reason this guy had done it, put two of them together. That's two more places to leak. And the nylon is not really, um, or Delrin or whatever it may be, is not really designed to, you know, to settle into all of those finer grooves. So I find that out of the two, if one of them is going to leak, it's normally going to be the nylon one. But moving on, um, the most astounding thing that I found on this, and this is where the less experienced and the less trained eye will probably fall down. Now, those of you who are probably looking at this can probably already, that know what you're looking at or already see the problem. Um, there's a couple here. First of all, this fitting here is missing. It normally goes off to the air cleaner or charcoal canister, depending on the vehicle. Uh, it's missing altogether, as are the bowl vent tubes, uh, the bowl vent risers. Normally a, a little pipe out of there with a 45 on the end of them. Um, but here, you can see these two vacuum orifices, which are essential. Well, this one here is essential to the operation of the carburetor. This is the vacuum orifice that goes to the vacuum secondary diaphragm. It has been blocked with a chunk of lead. Now, why someone would want to do that, I have no idea. Normally, quite common, you'll see someone's taken the ball out of there. Uh, not so much on these ones with the brass plug because it's retained and you can't get it out of there um, or it's just a, a fixed restrictor. But um, I have never seen one of these blocked there. So I'm going to have to get in and drill that orifice out because without that, being open, the secondaries are just not going to work. You've got essentially a 300 CFM two barrel carburetor that takes up the space of a four barrel. This one here is the manifold vacuum source to the automatic choke, would it be here? This is a manual choke carburetor. But regardless, um, this fitting here, if you put the proper cork gasket on there and then put that on there and screw it down properly with the rest of the assembly on there, that's going to seal, it's going to seal fine. There's no reason to block this up with fucking lead. I mean, the mind, the mind boggles. Um, outside of that, there was a handful of other things about this carburetor that I just looked at and thought, no, nah, it's, it's had a bit of an odd life. There was mismatched gaskets. Um, half the gaskets for, were from one brand of kit, the other gaskets from another brand of kit. Um, it's, it's a real mishmash. So putting a kit through this carburetor, it would not have solved any of the problems that it has. So. I'm going to cut this off pretty short because I could, I could go on for a long, long time. But um, as someone who has seen pretty much every type of carburetor that there is out there, you know, I used to do five or six of these things a day. And that, that was, you know, Holly's, Rochester's, um, Auto Lights, uh, Carter's, Stromberg's, CD Stromberg's, uh, you know, SU's, uh, McCoonies, Zenith's, Solex's, yeah, you name it, if it's, uh, there's a bloody good chance after that amount of time that I've had one across my bench. Um, and putting a kit through it uh, is, is not the way to do it. It doesn't fix anything. So if you don't know what you're looking for and you do have a problem with your carburetor, find someone that's a specialist that has the right tools, you know, even this little thing here, so many people don't have that. That is the tool you use to not destroy these when you pull them out of this carburetor on the secondary metering plate. It's these little things that separate a specialist from some bloke that used to work at such and such wrecking yard, put a kit through it and set a spark plugs and a week later it, you know, was running shitty again, you know. So, the long and the short of it is, um, if someone comes to me with a carburetor and just says, oh, can you put a kit through it? No, it's not going to happen. I will do an overhaul or I will do a quick repair. And my cutoff line for repairs it's very, very low down the, down the, uh, down the ladder of, um, of things that need to be addressed, you know, unless it's something very simple like maybe a perforated diaphragm or something that's painstakingly obvious. Um, my, my gamut of repairs that I will do, fairly limited. Um, before I get to the stage where I say, no, we're taking this off, we're going to completely strip it down, we're going to machine it flat, we're going to rebush the throttle shaft if it needs it, we're going to um, you know, chemically clean it, we're going to yeah, do everything that we need to do here to get it back to the place where it is as good as, if not better than, a brand new carburetor. So, my rant for the day, no, I won't put a kit through your carburetor. I hope I haven't brought you down too much, but I just need to get this off my chest. <laughs> anyway guys thanks very much for watching i hope you've learned something from this and uh, uh if you do like this sort of stuff like subscribe yada yada um and um we'll see you in the next video thanks for watching